Hey guys, I knew I'd cry when I saw you. Uh, this is so awesome to be together again. So I just need someone to tell me when we're live so I know to go live. We're live? Hey guys, welcome. We are gathering tonight with our second year and third year students. This is, yes, this is so exciting for us. Walking in the building, I got excited. Just, I could hear people just cheering. There's a hunger in the room tonight, and it's just how much I've missed gathering with people. And even though we're not open yet to everybody, we pray that you will enjoy tonight and worship with us. It's Pentecost Sunday, and there's no better place to be gathered together worshiping Jesus. So let's just welcome the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We praise you. Thank you so much, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being sent to us to comfort us, how we need your comfort right now more than ever. We need you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our lives, into our homes, into our churches. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Move and have your way. Jesus, touch us, ignite us with a first love all over again. Let your fire fall on every single person, Lord, every single person watching from their homes. Let your fire fall in Jesus' mighty name. It's our joy to gather and worship you, Jesus. This is all for you, Jesus. We love you. We welcome you. Have your way tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Jesus for your presence Lord here I love you're here I love we sing to you
Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, just begin to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your wonderful love. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood, for your kindness, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your amazing love. And so we turn our hearts to you tonight, and we just want to say thank you for your power. Thank you for your outstretched arm that is mighty to save. Your arm is not short. You are mighty to save. So I give you all the glory tonight. Come on, just lift your hands, begin to love him all over the room. Come on, just lift your voice, begin to just sing to the Lord a new song. singing, keep singing. every hand lifted. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Unless you're on your knees, you can stay there. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come tonight thankful for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us and in us and on us and in our midst. So I pray that every heart here and every heart watching would look to you tonight continually. I pray that there would not be a, a moment, not, not the slightest break in the awareness and experience of your presence tonight. Holy Spirit, have mercy on us and awaken us to the reality of your presence. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Now get really happy and praise the Lord that we can all be here for you. Yeah, thank you. Jesus. Um, Let's do that again. Let's give Jesus praise. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Wonderful. Wonderful. sing one more song. Is that good? Yeah. More precious than silver. Come on, let's just adore the Lord. Just forget about everything. I love you too. Come on, close your eyes. And just lift your hands to heaven.
let's go lift your voice We mean it. Come on, lift your voice. Give him praise. Give him praise. We mean it. We mean it. We mean it, Lord. You are beautiful, kind, righteous in all your ways. There is no one like you. Ah. All right. I tell you to love some people, but love them by faith. Grab a seat. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. It's so good to see all of you. Are you happy? <laughs> We're back. And uh, for those of you who are part of the church uh, and you're wondering why you're not here tonight, if you're watching from around the world or if you're part of the church in Orlando, these are only a portion of our students, so we wanted to make the first gathering a gathering with our students, and that's all the more reason for you to become a student. <laughs> but um, we, we uh, why don't we start up? We are, we are going to gather again at the, at the same location, the same uh, location off West Colonial on June the 14th, Okay. And we're going to social distance, we're going to do the whole thing. But tonight is uh, kind of like a scrimmage, but it feels really good in here. And uh, we wanted to do things the right way, and we figured we wanted to do it with some crazy, wild, Jesus-loving people. So you made the team if you're in here. And um, I love you guys. It's so good to be here. How long have we not seen each other? Yeah. All of you are happy. Two months? Three months. Jesse walked in and started crying. I'm good. You can kill it. I'm still here in the pad. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, Jesse walked in and started weeping. And I, 
I thought, I knew it. I knew it. I know it. She really loves you guys. I mean, we all love you, but she really loves you. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. she's crying again. I want to thank Johan and his team for, uh, So, um, yeah. Where is Johan? Johan, you around, buddy? You around, bud? Oh, he's in the back. He, we, we met, yeah. Love you. We have had to made, make some pretty hardcore decisions over the last three months. And uh, they were first for all of us. Um, even meeting here was kind of a last minute decision and it was a good one. Um, and he just pivots hard and quick and they do an amazing, amazing job. And uh, I, really the Lord sent Yoan to us. Do, do you guys know how I met Yoan? All right, so it was his birthday in Geneva, Switzerland. Was it in Lausanne or Geneva? Lausanne, yeah. And I think Clem was with me. And Jean-Luc, Jean who's like the uh, Holy Spirit Pepe Le Pew. Um, <laughs> he, he's a Swiss guy. You guys know Jean-Luc, he's been with us. Uh, he, in the middle, in like an arena, he said it's my friend's birthday. And I thought, <laughs> well, good for your friend. So he said, can I call him up on the platform during the meeting and have you pray for him for his birthday? And I thought, that's a little different. Never heard of that. So Yoan came up, and I tell you, I really didn't feel anything until about two seconds before I prayed for him. And then I felt the Lord touch him. And there's a picture of it. And he's on the ground. The Lord is really, really just touching him beautifully. And then he reached out and said the Lord spoke to him to come serve our ministry. And uh, do you know that Yoan has served this ministry without a paycheck all this time? Because of his, his citizenship. He has done all of this unto the Lord. And I can't even imagine how happy Jesus is with you. And I want to be around to see how he rewards you. Because it's going to make you really happy and some other people very jealous. But... You deserve it. So we love you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Is he crying? Huh? Yeah, he's working on it too so that we can hire him. He loves America. He, 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 he just bought a pickup truck. <laughs> he's, he's biting the whole thing. You, you know, every once in a while when you go fishing, you, I don't know if you guys know about these, probably not, they're called mirror lures, and some of them have nine hooks, three treble hooks on each, so there's three hooks on a treble hook, and every once in a while you catch a fish, and you barb it with every hook, and it's all jacked up, and the fish is in there, and I know, well, it's good on the plate, I promise you. It's awesome. And that is what Johan has done with America. He, he bit the entire lure. <laughs> and he has been barbed. And I love you. Thank you, Johan. I want to thank our whole team. You guys are amazing. I love all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a tough, this has been a real, uh, it's been a, a challenging time. You know, everyone has an opinion. Most of the people who have the opinion don't, are not responsible for thousands of people and, uh, and, and hundreds of students. So, yeah, I'll leave that there. <laughs> but we've been trying to hear the Holy Spirit. And I think we finally came around where we felt like, okay, the Lord's saying, gather again. But, you know, I've, 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 I'm going to talk tonight, uh, and 
talk about Matthew 24. But I, I got an interesting phone call from Brian Guerin this morning. And basically the Lord spoke to him. I, 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 and I hope you guys know me well enough. And for those of you watching on our live stream, we love you. Can we let them know how grateful we are all over the world? You guys are incredible. Yeah, you're part of our family, and we love you. Yeah, we really do. We're so grateful for you and, and our friends watching around the world. You're a family to us. Uh, Brian called and said that he felt like the Lord was speaking into our environment. I talked, when I do my cardio, I call him because I hate cardio. And I just kind of go through like, I, well, that's not the only reason I call him, but <laughs> half of the reason I call him to get the cardio over more quickly. I go through my like, best friends and, and uh, family calls uh, when I'm doing cardio, and it works well. So he's like, bro, I really, I, I feel like the Lord spoke to me that there's something about, and I, you have never heard me do this before, so hopefully you know that I believe this is really the Lord. He said there's something about Pentecost and Jesus' image regarding generosity. He specifically saw a 50 and an offering basket connected and he said the Lord showed him that it was, it was about Pentecost. So even though this is out of my comfort zone, um, it seems to be the Lord. So I feel like we are supposed to do something tonight to thank God uh, that we are, be, we are able to, join, to be back in his presence again. And we're going to go on a journey <clears throat> of generosity as a people. Tomorrow is a big day for us. We have a phone call with our board again and an attorney regarding the acquisition of some property. Uh, so we are, we are on the move. And I know I've told you that a few times, but I need you to know that I don't stop banging the door down. Um, we need our own place. We, we need to create a rhythm. You know, I want to walk in with my coffee into a prayer room at 8 in the morning and sit with Jesus, and I want to pastor people, and I want to preach the gospel and host events so that people can come to our city. I want it to be a hub of God's presence. So um, this is going to require a lifestyle of generosity, and I believe it's connected uh, to Pentecost. I believe like this is the beginning of a wave, and I'll get into it in more detail in just a second. But next year, you students are going to be reading a book called The Blessed Life, and everyone in our church will be getting that book. Uh, Robert Morris wrote the book. I don't think there's a better teacher in the world on the subject of generosity. A man who's walked in integrity and has a real allegiance to the scriptures, and I just so value and honor him. So we reached out to Pastor Robert and we asked him if we would be able to begin using some of his teaching material when we gather. Because there's something on, on him. There's an anointing on him that when he teaches, the lights go on. So Johan, can we run uh, the segment for tonight and then I'll touch on Pentecost in just a moment. famous passage on tithing, although there are many passages on tithing, and I'll show you some of them today. But this is probably the most famous one. And so I had a conversation with the Lord one time, and I said, Lord, uh, uh, the number one reason that I hear that people don't tithe is they say, well, that's in the Old Testament. That's in the Old Testament. And so I said to the Lord, um, you know, Lord, you put this in Malachi 3, and then there's Malachi 4, and then Matthew 1. Couldn't you have just waited I mean, just a little while. I mean, the, you know, these verses only miss the New Testament by like 15 verses. I mean, couldn't you just waited just a little while and put it, you know what the Lord said? To him, I just felt in my spirit, he said, I put it right where I wanted it. And the reason is, here's point number one, because tithing is a test. Tithing is a test. See, God is testing our hearts. 
even when a person argues about tithing, I think to myself, what is the spirit behind this? Why would this person argue when God gave his son for you and you won't even give him 10%? Why would you argue about this? It's amazing to me. I'm telling you, it's a test of your heart. It's a test. Now, uh, I, here's why I believe uh, he chose 10%. By the way, the word tithe uh, is a Hebrew word. Uh, Ma'ashra is the Hebrew word. And it means tenth part or 10%. Tenth part. Tenth. Okay, so that's where we, we get this from, that we know it's 10%. Okay. Here's why I think he chose 10%. First of all, I think he chose a percentage because it's fair to everyone. It doesn't matter if you make 30000 or 300000 It's a penny on every dime. It's the same for every person. Uh, but here's the reason I think he chose 10. Because for some reason, many times when you see the number 10 in the Bible, it represents testing. You'll actually see the word test with it. Uh, for instance, let me, let's, let's take a little test, all right? I'm going to ask, ask you a question, and I want you to answer me uh, out loud. Uh, all the campuses, all the churches, just say your answer out loud, all right? Here's the first question. How many plagues were there in Egypt? Ten, Ten right? Now, I could have said it a different way. I could have said, how many times did God test Pharaoh's heart? Because that's what he did. But we're familiar with how many plagues there were, all right? Here's the second question. How many commandments are there? Ten, Ten okay? Um, now, I'm going to ask another question, and you might not know this, but there's a, a pattern here. <laughs> Okay, and this is in Numbers 14 where God actually says this. You can read it later, all right? But, and then I want you to say your answer just a little louder, okay? Uh, how many times did God test Israel in the wilderness? Ten. That's correct. All right, how many times, again, you might not know this, but okay. How many times were Jacob's wages changed? Ten. Ten. God was testing his heart. How many days was Daniel tested? Ten. How many virgins were tested in Matthew 25? How many days of testing are mentioned in Revelation? Ten. How many disciples were there? No, there were 12. I was just testing you. <laughs> I, just, just, I was just testing you. Okay. So tithing is a test. And, but here's something that you might not know. It's a two-way test. God not only tests you, but this is the only place in Scripture that I've found where God says, you can test me. Test me. This word try, that is sometimes translated test or prove, uh, it comes from uh, the way you test a metal, the way you test gold to see if it's pure. You know what God is saying? Test me to see if I'm pure. Test me. I want you to. I want you to see because I want to open the windows of heaven. I want to bless you. I want to rebuke the devourer for you. But it depends on whether you're going to thank me and worship me and walk in faith and whether you're going to believe that 90% with God's blessing will go farther than 100% without. Well, isn't that good? Wow. Yeah, that's so powerful. Oh, that's powerful. I want us to step in this evening, if you're watching, to all of you watching around the world, I'm going to ask you to become a faithful tither. If you're here in the room, I want us to become faithful tithers. Remember, the amount is not open for discussion. It's not open for our perspective. It is the first tenth of all the Lord brings us. But I also feel, based on what Brian spoke to me about this morning, I feel that we're to step in above and beyond and go beyond what we're used to. I'm going to do the same. I'm starting tonight. I just want you to know that. And you may say, I don't have a dime. Well, if you don't have a dime, give something you beyond what you've been able to give. But we, I am talking about finances here. But I heard a story about a woman who's a preacher. She said, I'll never forget an offering tray going by. I didn't have any money, so I tore a button off my shirt and threw it in the offering tray. Now, I'm not asking you women to do that. Okay. But it just shows you <laughs> that she was hungry. That she was wanting to obey the Lord. Now on Pentecost, Pentecost is connected to the harvest. It is connected to harvest. Therefore, when we enter this season, I feel that we should bring, according to the scriptures, a gift to the Lord. Now I don't know about you, but I am so thankful and so grateful to be in this room tonight. And I want to enter the presence of the Lord with an offering. Yes, our songs are an offering. But I want us to give him something. 
something substantial, something tangible. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your kindness and your love. Thank you for all you've done. Now I pray in Jesus' name. You know, I've never felt this before, but I'm going to pray it. In Jesus' name, release over this house miraculous, supernatural breakthrough in the area of finance, favor, provision for your people. In Jesus' name. And do it for everyone watching. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're only going to give tonight by text to give. Um, if uh, We need to talk that out, guys. If people brought checks, we'll find a way. What, what's up, Carla? What were you going to say? Oh, so we're only doing text to give. All right, is the info up? Yep, there you go. You guys are quick. There you go. And if you're watching online, you can just text GIVE uh, to 321-320-8040. I have that number memorized by now. I've only been saying that for three months in the studio. 321-320-8040. All right. Why don't you, let, let, let's see what the Lord's doing here. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you're a tither and the Lord's inviting you, and I believe he is, to step beyond the tithe tonight into the area of offering, which is where I believe multiplication actually begins to take place. Holy Spirit, speak in Jesus' name, and this is all for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you're through giving, I just want you to close your eyes and begin just praying very softly in the spirit, though. Make it audible, but just softly. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Fill this house. Fill this house with your presence. Open our ears, our hearts to your word. In the name of Jesus. And we give ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So let's take our Bibles to Matthew 24, please. <clears throat> Today is Pentecost Sunday. That should make you happy. I have news for you. Every day is Pentecost Sunday. How many of you actually believe we're living in the last days? Well, if you didn't raise your hand, you're wrong, regardless of your outlook. Because they said in the, on the day of Pentecost... Peter said, these are the last days. They have been, John said, John the Beloved in his epistle said, these are the last days. So we have been in the last days for 2,000 years. So I believe we're in the last of the last days. You say, that freaks me out. Well, it would do you well just to accept it. You'd be a little less shocked. Now, I want to touch on a few things tonight. I'm going to go a route that I typically don't go because I haven't had to go there uh, recently, but I have in the past. Our, our nation needs Jesus right now. Our nation needs Jesus. We are walking through a... I don't remember a time like this, and I'm only 21 years old. I... I <laughs> In this last 21 years, I, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm double that, I'm 42. I, 
I think it's interesting that corona means crown and that it's trying to steal glory from the Lord. On top of that, what happened in Minneapolis with George Floyd was completely demonic. Completely demonic. Evil to the core. The turbulence in the nations right now. This isn't just America. The, the, the turbulence is demonic. The reason, well, one of the reasons I say we need Jesus so badly is because you don't know who you can believe. You know, Christians should be known for more than uh, which news network they watch. Are you, are you hearing me? It was said of the disciples in the book of Acts that they serve another king, one called Jesus. And so I believe in godly authority. I believe, I am so grateful for the wonderful, God-loving, servant-hearted law enforcement officials who have served us in the worst scenarios. We are dialing 911. And so right now, if opinions are not tethered to the love of Jesus, a lot of people are going to throw the baby out with the bathwater in either direction. My friend Ken Clater, who has been a dear friend for 10 years, he's an African-American pastor. He called me the other day, and I've been talking to leaders and been speaking to many of you students. And, and I want to thank you for the honor of just giving me that much time. I think I was driving through Virginia on a Zoom call with many of you, hearing your hearts. But Ken brought something up that was beautiful. He said, there's one race. It's called the human race. That's what the Bible says. There's one. And so racism is just a form of that race attacking itself. What we're walking through right now is if you mix and combine all of this, it's unparalleled. Fear is sweeping the nations. And that's why I say we need Jesus. We need something beyond theologies that talk about transforming cities. Because until the heart is transformed, men and women are wicked at the core. Wicked. Even unity, which I believe in, by the way, let me say this. I believe in unity. But even unity is subjective. I, I said this to our staff in the back. Unity in and of itself means something different to everyone. In marriages, in the marital context, uh, we can be united as long as you do what I tell you to do. Right? Right? Or in the friendship context, we can be friends as long as we agree, and, and, and our friendship is unity. But that's just control. If I can't walk, if I can't disagree and walk with you, then I'm trying to control you. Right? That's called an ultimatum. You either think the way I think or we're done. Now, obviously, there is a time for that. The scriptures teach that regarding uh, people who claim to be Christians, for instance, and live a life of immorality. The Bible says don't even eat with them. Notice it doesn't say that regarding an unbeliever who lives in immorality. It does say that about the church, though, because God is so interested in the reputation of his bride. So the Lord says, look, so that there's no confusion the person who professes Christ and lives a life of immorality, that person you don't even go to Starbucks with. You're like, I don't like that. Well, I didn't write that. It's there. Deal with it. It's there.
But I'm not sure the church is celebrating what God celebrates. I'm just not sure we are. The church celebrates the guy that gets the most miracles. Heaven celebrates the guy that loves his enemy. Our revival culture celebrates the guy who can get the most specific word of knowledge. But Jesus celebrates washing the feet of someone who will betray you. We need Christianity again. We don't need to be wizards. Do you think, and I, I feel like I've probably seen as many or more miracles either through our ministry or witnessed the way I grew up just about as much as anyone. But do you think the Lord is up in heaven going, you did great there. Amazing power flowing through you there, Mike. Good job. That's not what impresses the Lord. But a soft heart will. This is the type of transformation that allows you to listen and grieve with those who are broken. And it's got to transcend our politics. In either direction. And only Jesus can do it. The thought, let me just be honest with you. The thought of me being or not being a dear friend to John Wilds because he's black is crazy to me. He's just John to me. We've been in the presence of God together. I don't think any of us are looking for something artificial. Right? Well, how do you keep it from being artificial? How do you actually step into this thing shifting and changing? You have to see Jesus in people. That's what Jesus said. If you... Do this for the least of these. You've done it unto me. So, regardless of someone's skin color, how I treat them is a reflection. Or I should say, it's an invitation to treat Jesus a certain way. I feel like we all do need to come to the table. This isn't a, this is not a teaching tonight on this, but, or on race, or it did, but my heart, it did break. I, I've spoken to so many of my black friends and and they were talking to me about the reality that they live with or that they've grown up with and it broke my heart. Sometimes the mountains seem so big, they seem so immovable. Because let's be honest, these conversations have been going on for a long time. I heard Bishop Jakes today and he was talking about the fact that he was just so tired. Well, what's, why is he so tired? Because he's been wanting to see breakthrough and hasn't seen it and it wears you down, Right? But I'm not just saying it because it sounds catchy. We, we need Jesus badly. Because this is a mountain that only he can move. But it starts here. It doesn't start in boardrooms. It, it starts in kitchens and at dining room tables. Do you follow me? It doesn't start on panels. It doesn't start on, you know, did you post fast enough? Did you post the right way? Did you post quickly enough? That's not... 
since when does social media fix an issue? This thing starts at a table in the presence of Jesus. When I met Daniel Kalenda, he looked me in the eye and said, I just need you to know I have an ulterior motive for being your friend. It's the first time we hung out. I go, great. It's a great, uh, it's a great opener, man. <laughs> we were eating a pizza. Washed it down with a milkshake before the keto days. Before the any kind of nutrition days. I said, really, what's that? He goes, Jesus is my agenda. He said, I want to be in your life because I want to know Jesus. I want to walk with Jesus more lovingly, and I want to see him change the world through our relationship. You take Jesus out of anything, and it's boring and meaningless. Church is like the worst when Jesus isn't there. <laughs> right, Kathleen? It's the worst. Seriously. People are like, can you wait to, can you wait to get back to church? I go, sort of. If the Lord's there, if he's not, I'm going to stay in quarantine. <laughs> That's really where my head is. Jess is walking in. She's like, yeah, be back. And I do love y'all. But I walk in and I go, oh, I love them. Lord, I hope you're here. It's going to be a really bad time together. It's true. If you don't know the Lord, you forget the most beautiful vista. You will. You can look at the most gorgeous scenery. It's so much better when Jesus is there. It makes sense when Jesus is there. The ocean makes sense. The wind makes sense. Trees are more beautiful. Walking alone through the forest, which I do, all, I love to do. Drive, I, I drive a little golf cart down this trail and I'll sit there sometimes. It looks like the Jurassic Park video. But I sense the Lord in all of that. Why? Because of him. He has filled all things. So our job, our job is to turn the nations to Jesus. Now when, when our brothers and sisters, in this case, it is the African American community, when they are bleeding and broken, we break with them. We weep with them. If it doesn't move our heart, we are not as connected as we say we are. How many parents do I have in the room? You have to ask yourself this question. Do I live with the reality in every area of life that my African-American brothers and sisters live with? Do I have the same cares and the same worries? The answer is probably not. That in and of itself should do something on the inside of us as a people who love each other. But the answer is not debate, the answer is lowliness and love. It takes humility to listen. Listening requires humility. Doing all the talking is merely expressing that what I have to say is more valuable than what you have to say. When, how many of you love talking to people who interrupt you? Jesse and I do that to each other all the time. It's not good. We need to get better at it. And all of you are like, I have never done that to my spouse. Of course you have. You did it today. Right? Ryan, you did it today. <laughs> do you know why people don't like being interrupted? It's because the person who's doing the, the interrupting is communicating without verbalizing it exactly. They're verb this is what they're communicating. What I have to say is more important than what you have to say. What you have to say means nothing. In the moment, in the moment, what I have to say trumps what you have to say. So humility says, please speak. I don't know what I'm talking about. Those are the Jesus people. We listen. And so more than ever, we need the presence of Jesus. In our city, because let me be real with you guys. This isn't just happening over yonder. This is happening in Orlando. Just look at the news last night. 
what fixes all this? Jesus himself. Jesus himself. So we need to get back to the, I don't know, being Christian. Like what if every Jesus school student put a few bucks in their pocket every day to help the poor? That's what I do. I mean, if, if you're going to be students here, I just need you to know that. I'm not saying it so that you can pat me on the back, but I do it. And my kids will tell you, when we get to an intersection, there are many intersections where that window's going down. And somebody's going to get blessed, and I'm going to tell them about Jesus. That's what we do. But I feel like we've gotten so into these things, and God has destroying it all. People ask me all the time, are you in depression because you can't go to church? No. No, I'm not. Do you miss your students? A lot. Do you miss the church? I miss them. But I'm not in depression. Wait, you're still okay? I'm still great. You, I think some people got more busy on quarantine than before and missed their opportunity. I am so sick of Zoom calls. <laughs> Jess is like, what are you doing? You have like four scheduled. I stopped taking them. Ro will tell you. I'm like, no, no, I'm good. Well, there's a few people. If they called me, I'd do it. But I no, I'm not. I am not going to busy my soul when God is saying, breathe. <laughs> Joseph, what are you doing, buddy? You back in town? Oh, you just moved back. He's going to be second year. Oh, yay. Come on. <laughs> Do you remember, how many of you played sports? How many of y'all started? Oh, about a third of the hands. About a third of the hands. Good job. All right. I'm not very familiar with the bench. It was never a view I enjoyed. <laughs> All right. If you weren't a starter, then just let's pretend you were. All right. So, you get in the game. It's the third or fourth quarter. Coach says, uh, come have a seat. You need a break. You're not getting benched, but they would do this with Jordan. I don't know what, like eight minutes into the fourth, he'd take the bench and he'd drink his Gatorade and he'd take a deep breath and then get in there and close the deal. What if while Jordan was supposed to be on the bench, Phil Jackson turns around, turns behind him, and Jordan's running bleachers? He's running sprints. And the Phil would go, MJ, sit down. This You are missing the point of taking a break. And what actually happens is when he gets back in the game, he's more fatigued than when he came off the field. So Jesus talked about these moments. He said, look. As children of the light, we should know the day and hour we're living in. So we are to discern seasons as Jesus people. We need to pick up on what the Lord is doing with us. So I know not gathering was hard on many of you. And I know other people did gather. But tr just... <laughs> In case some of you don't believe this, like these were real bullets. There is a real virus out there and people are getting it. I know many of them. So get off some of the websites. It's real. Okay, so as a leader, we had to make decisions. Okay, I mean, I can't even talk, tell you about the domino effect of these decisions. Your children, who they go home with, how old the people are that you live with. 
school opening again in the fall, being a part. Do you get it? This, this is how we think. And so my job is ultimately beyond your spiritual uh, walk is to keep you safe. Right? So we have to discern when the Lord is saying, come into the house, put, the two, put blood on the two lintels and the doorpost, and feast on the lamb. Because tonight I'm going to open the door and you're going to go somewhere you've never gone before. I'm about to deliver you from Egypt. Hear me prophetically tonight. There is a mass deliverance taking place. A mass deliverance. Hear me out. We are coming out of the world. I'm not talking about getting snatched up. I am talking about complete liberation. Because do you know what the Lord is doing right now? He is attempting to show his people how broken, how dark, and how demonized the system of the world really is. It has nothing for us. Nothing at all. Except good golf courses. We, we don't mix with it. What I mean by that is the system of the world, listen, is crumbling before your eyes. You say, how can you say that and smile? Because I serve another king. One named Jesus. Do you know that your external surroundings have nothing to do with your internal joy. It takes a while to get there. I'm not saying that's easy, but it is our reality. Okay, I want you to think of this for a moment. Jesus said this, you ready? The kingdom of heaven, let's go slow. The kingdom of heaven is inside of you. What? Well, how big is that? What is the kingdom's potential? What are you able to do, God? What are you not able to do? What is available in you? All of that right here from your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. I think I've shared this quote with you before. St. Augustine said it. I spent my life trying to find him without only to discover he was within. <laughs> if you've really realize that there is no human or demon or dark force that can take this from you, you are indestructible. It's got to go from, this is what's going on at Jesus' image, to this. This is what I am experiencing right here. It's got to go from the atmosphere into you. It, let me say it this way. It has to become ours. If God blesses you with millions of dollars and you're shocked by his goodness and you're wondering why he would entrust you with it, you need to be convinced of the fact that if you lived in a studio apartment with a family of eight, that you would be equally as joyful. Did you understand what I'm saying? We need to be less connected to the world. I mean, if you want to be afraid right now, it is the perfect time. This is it. So here you go. I mean, have at it. If you want to be completely freaked out. This is the best time to do it. 
I mean, I mess with Yohan and the guys, so we'll be in the studio, right? And we, we, we obey all the guidelines. But how many of you have been loving those tapings from the studio? That's all the team. They've been smashing it. And people, now we have a media ministry that I never thought we'd have. And we're able to turn it around so much quicker. And so the, the devil's losing. We're not reacting. God is, God is leading this thing. God is on the throne. But they'll bring me a, a protein bar. So I'll make Ryan sanitize his hands. He brings me the protein bar. I sanitize my hands. But I don't know who touched the protein bar before he touched it. So I sanitize the wrapper. <laughs> you know, you get a drink of water, I'm spraying it down. I mean, this thing can go a long way if you wanted to. I know people who literally, I know someone who for weeks would not leave their room in the fetal position. Not an old woman. She's in her 40s. Like 46 years old, I think. Fetal position. Won't leave the room. I'm not, I'm not dogging. I'm just saying. This can get as, you can go as far as you want to go in this hour with being completely hopeless. So, looking forward to the Lord's return is not escapism. It is our blessed hope. It's wonderful. So, I want all of us to close our eyes right now. And I want you to say out loud. Jesus is coming back very soon. Say that again. Jesus is coming back. Very soon. One more time. Jesus is coming back. Very soon. All right. Does that freak some of you out? Yeah, it does. Some of you. <laughs> it used to freak me out. Do you know why and when it freaked me out the most? When I was the least connected to him. Paul Teske says it all the time. He said the reason we don't raise some of the some dead people is because people go to heaven. They don't want to come back. <laughs> and he said, he goes, if I ever die, he told me, don't you dare try to raise me. <laughs> he told me that. He goes, don't try to raise me. I don't want to come back to this crazy place. <laughs> well, it makes sense. Heaven has to become more real to us. Heaven. Saintliness needs to become part of our pursuit. The Lord just give me a U-turn. Oh, gosh, this is going to get good. That just shot through me. All right. Go to Hebrews chapter. Mm, 13. Hebrews 11, sorry, Hebrews 11, verse 13. Sorry, guys, it's a scrimmage. You know what? You know how I get when I start seeing other verses near it. We just keep hitting rewind. Let's go to verse 1. I'm telling you, you better get ready. I feel the Lord. Are you ready? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can I come down? I don't know what it does to the cameras. 
Can I? No? Can I come down, Johan? Yeah? This is the question. <laughs> All right. All right. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence, listen, listen, listen. Number one, faith is a substance. Faith is not a theory. It's a substance. Why is it a substance? Because God is a substance. God is. God is real. He is tangible. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. That's why when his presence manifests, your prayers are short. You strike like with this little dagger and everything starts happening. Because his presence is there. Faith is available. No formulas needed. You just, the Lord is there. Because he's there, faith is available. You connect with his face, faith and face. Simple declaration, things happen. That's where that old saying comes from. If you have ten minutes to pray, worship for nine. Go through your prayer list for one. Become aware, worship, he manifests his presence more and then I speak and I hit hard and fast and I know for a fact the Lord heard me. Well, how long, how many of you have gone through your prayer list? I have one, it's okay. I just got a new one. You want to know what's in it? No? Okay, you don't have to. You want to know what's in it? Not telling you. All right, gotcha. Try spending three hours with the Lord on a prayer list. You just get tired, right? The bulk of our time is ministering to the Lord. He manifests his presence. Then we pray. And that's why Jesus said, we're not like the heathen. We don't use vain repetition. We don't have to try to get God's attention like the prophets of Baal. We don't need to do all these crazy things to get an answer. We minister to the Lord. He manifests. We speak. And we know our Father heard us. It's awesome. Faith is a substance. Faith is available in the substance of the Spirit. Now, it is also, listen carefully, the evidence of things not seen. Hold on a minute. Hold on. I thought the evidence is the miracle. If you can get this one, you'll walk on water. What I mean by that is you'll take risk and everyone around you will think you're nuts. Because your evidence is not the breakthrough. Your evidence is the presence of God. It's a substance. Let me say it again. Faith is a substance and it is the evidence. We've been trained to believe that the miracle is the evidence. No, that's not the evidence. His presence is the evidence. It is the evidence of things not seen. The presence of faith in my heart is the evidence that whom I believe in is really real. That's why God doesn't feel the need to perform for us. And that's why somebody with true faith has nothing to prove to another person. You know, like the one thing, if you have such a gift of healing or whatever, go into the hospital and clean out all the sick. Well, first of all, I don't work for you. Right? I work for God. I only do what I see him do, number one. So somebody in true rest who's walking in true faith and awareness of God performs for nobody because they already have the evidence. They don't need to do it to get a brownie point. They're at rest. Now, many of you learned that in first year. Man, some of you all came into first year like aliens. <laughs> like aliens. <laughs> I can't tell you how many staff meetings we have. You think that was God? I'm not sure. I don't think so. No? Well, maybe it was. Okay, we don't know. We'll let it ride for a little bit. <laughs> and then I watched a deep rest fall on you guys. Now, I don't ever want to take out the passion 
and the red revival button in this environment. I love what Bill says. He has never heard of a single revival end because of too much passion. What I don't want to be is the frozen chosen here <laughs> who are balanced. That will never be allowed. Lord, have mercy. Don't ever let us be that. We always want to have that red revival button in our environment, in our culture. If God, you move, we hit the button and the whole thing is canceled. Have your way. Do you follow me? We can't lose that. But what I did watch is a lot of the performance burn in the fire of rest in your life. Some of y'all came in like, wow, wow, whoa, straight through the door, like first day. I'm like, man, we haven't even started yet. <laughs> wow, whoa, so good. Even when it wasn't so good. I'd be like, man, that, how, that wasn't that good. <laughs> Come on. And I hadn't even started. Do you know what I mean? You know? I'm like, man, I wonder if Jesus was doing that. Come on! I don't know how it got on us. And it's not so good. It's so good. It's, I don't know how we inherit all this stuff. Really? But you don't see us like flogging you, penalizing you, making you clean the coffee cart. Nobody's doing that. What are we doing? We're letting you get in. You come into the presence, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, I have him. I have everything I need. I don't need to do some of that to get a brownie point. He died for me. I'm a citizen of another place. He's watching me. He's looking at me. He's counting the hairs on my head. The ones that turn gray, I tell everyone, you either have traitors or deserters. He knows about all of them. He's in love with you. You following me? He's in love with you. Therefore, you have nothing to prove to me. Now, if that turns into pride, then you bit another lure. But the point is, is this rest, faith, this substance is an actual evidence. It means I don't have to create an outcome to believe God is real. So, so, so let me tell you how this works for me personally. There are times where I walk up to somebody, let's say they're in a wheelchair or they're sick. So the Lord's moving through me. And I know that I know they're getting healed. Now that doesn't happen every time, but there are moments where I know that I know. And I've learned, and I'm still learning, but I've learned that that presence, that spirit of faith is the evidence. And I know they're getting out. It's almost like I've been there before. It's like, and I'm not preaching some weird deja vu thing. I'm not doing that. But I'm saying it's like I am so certain that God is going to do it. That's the evidence. So I, listen, I want you to be more cognizant of his presence than the pressure that's on you to get a breakthrough. It's that presence that is proof that you have the breakthrough. Some of you got it. Now let's keep going. Can I have a little more time? By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. In other words, the visible came out of in, the invisible through the speaking of the Lord. All right, here we go. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, for which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, that through it he being dead still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. How would you like that on your resume? For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he, talk to me, come on, this is a Jesus school class, that he, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
He who comes to God must believe that he is. That's why I tell you, don't go to prayer. Go to Jesus. Are you with me? That's why those little shifts. You know, my father-in-law used to tell us the story of how he'd listen to Catherine Kuhlman. And I think she was on an AM station. And he could barely pick it up in Toronto. She was down in Pittsburgh. But if he held the knob just right, if he could just hold the knob just right, for some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. But they existed, I promise. If he could hold the knob just right, he'd pick up the signal and he could hear Catherine. It's the slightest shifts. It's one degree in the other direction that causes you to hear and see what the Lord is doing. So when I say go to Jesus, don't go to prayer, what I'm trying to do is get your mind, your soul, off of the habit and the mechanism and to awaken your heart to presence. That was really good, even if you didn't like it. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, who is according to faith. What if God told you to build a boat and there had never been one? Or what if he said there's this thing coming called rain? It's never happened, but it's going to happen. That would be a pretty wild assignment. Noah grabbed it by faith. Listen, by faith, Abraham, and I'm talking about this because we are we are walking in an exodus by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called out to go to the place which he would receive as an inheritance but God didn't tell where Abraham where he was going he just said get up and go by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country listen carefully dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob and heirs with him of the same promise for he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham obeyed God and found the strength to go to a foreign land because he knew of another city. I, gosh, I hope you're getting this. What'd y'all drink? Benadryl? Listen. <laughs> This, <laughs> NyQuil, melatonin, kava kava, what did y'all do? Listen. If you aim for the stars and miss, you still take the mountains. If your heart is in heaven, you will conquer the land. If your heart's in the land, you'll see giants. That's where your heart is. If I never get invited to preach anywhere again, I'm good. I don't need a stadium. I'm good. I'd miss it, but I'm good because I have him who's everything. <laughs> you have him who is everything. So what can this world take from you? You know, sometimes we call pruning an attack from the devil. That's what we do. Someone came to me, ah, oh, babe, oh, it was you, obviously. <laughs> ah, 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 <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. Clearly, it had to be Jess. <laughs> babe, we got to meet. Why? We got to. Tell me why. Babe, what if, what if they don't come back? 
And I go, then they don't come back. But I said, babe, if God called them, what does the frequency of the meeting have to do with it? Do you really want to run with people and call it covenant? If they leave because you haven't been meeting for a few months, is, was that the fabric of the early church? I told Jess, I said, babe, if we end up at the Hampton Inn with the presence of Jesus, we're good. You say, but what are you doing right now? Don't, you're not running us off. No, I'm not running you off. I'm just telling you, you can be that free. Many of you are going to lead ministries and movements. If you become a slave to what the world calls success, you're going to jump on a hamster wheel and it's going to fatigue you and enslave you. You'll never be free. And you'll only be happy if there are enough people in the room. I know all y'all, y'all think I'm nuts, but I miss St. Andrews. And you're like, it was freezing in there. I know. <laughs> it was cold. And I love where we're at now. But I, I don't love it now anymore because there's more people there. Do you understand? So if I'm meeting, I have Jesus. If I'm not meeting, I have Jesus. If people betray you, you have Jesus. If people speak ill of you, you have Jesus. If people love you, you have Jesus. And the same, listen, if the fuel of your encouragement is the elevation that comes from people, those same people can tear you down. We are a people of presence. The win is him. If he's there, it was good. If he's not, it was bad. That's deep theology. If he's there, it's good. If he's not, it's bad. This is how you live free. Now, what you don't want to do is run people off with a bad attitude and call it God. But I'm telling you, if some of you go to the mission field, which I know many of you will, your Success is not based on how big your budget is and how many people you get saved. That's God's job. Your job is fidelity, first love, authenticity, a heart that's looking unto Him. That's your job. And if you pull that off, I promise you, you won't have nets big enough to catch all the fish. The Lord told this to me. He said, you build with purity, and I will add. It's your job is, is, is purity. My job is multiplication and addition. What time is it? All right, give me ten more. It's been a while, sorry. <laughs> Let me say that again. When God blesses you, something happens. You bear fruit. And this is what Jesus said. To him who bears fruit, this is what happens. God comes, the vine dresser, and prunes the branches. So it's not demonic attack all the time. Sometimes it's just the shears of the Lord. Let him tend to your vine. Let him simplify your life. What did we learn through this last three months? World economies can shift in a day. In a day. I love how Dan says it. He says it's like balancing a bowling ball on a safety pin. All the effort in one moment that thing can topple. How about church and what it is and what it isn't? Okay, successful church are a lot of people in a room. Well, those are gone. Yeah. Well, they have been for a while. So what does that mean? Does that mean that the church now is unsuccessful? 
I heard of a, of a pastor who has a movement, 35 of his churches lost their buildings. It's horrible. It's horrible. In a moment. I've heard some people say this is a bump in the road. This is not a bump in the road. The entire world shut down. It's like, I, I think the Lord goes, gosh, you guys, man, nothing gets your attention. A bump in the road? Okay. I mean, did you drive through downtown Orlando like a month and a half ago? There was nobody there. Six people on a flight from Orlando to LAX a month and a half ago. Six. That's not a bump in the road. That's reality. That's happening. What is God wanting to, he, God didn't bring it, but what is God trying to birth in us? A simple devotion of the Lord. For the first time, parents have had the time, hopefully, to be with their kids around the world. For some people, that's been brutal and scary. I understand. Because, no. <laughs> I mean, there's some whack things going on in, in houses. And it's, it's like abuse and all of that. It's, it, it's gone up. I think alcoholism has gone up. 300%. Porn's gone up five or six times. So I'm not, I, that's, that's genuine pain. At the same time, the Lord has given an opportunity for us to spend time with him again. But what if we didn't because we were on Zoom? What, what if we didn't because we were, we were on a device? <laughs> what if we didn't because we scheduled six Instagram lives in a day? I don't know about you. But I think the church praying and spending, imagine if millions of people would have taken this time to spend hours a day with God. Which do you think would have shifted culture? That or doing six Instagram lives a day? It is true. It's very true, babe. All right, let me read this resume here, this Hall of Fame. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Hmm. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, poor Abraham. <laughs> Speaking of his ability to procreate, as good as dead. <laughs> May it never be said of any of the men in this movement as good as dead. We're born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, listen, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, ooh, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they came out, they would have the opportunity to return. But now they desire a better that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. You have a homeland. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. Let me go through all of these. By faith, verse 20, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph. And worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter. Listen to this one. Choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God, this is verse 25, than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Help me there, Joel. 
esteeming the reproach of Christ, very softly, buddy, the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Wait, I thought Moses was before Jesus. Moses knew Jesus. He chose the reproach, the sufferings of Jesus, more than the treasures in Egypt. We need Jesus. We don't need Egypt. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. <laughs> by faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. Verse 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea. Verse 30, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down. Verse 31, by faith Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe. Verse 32, and what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets, who through faith, are you ready for this? This is where I wanted to get. By faith subdued kingdoms. What? You mean by faith filled the building? No. I mean by faith these holy men and women of God subdued Nations. By faith subdued kingdoms. I know some kingdoms that need to be subdued. Our nation needs to be subdued. But you can't fix this land if your heart is connected to this land. Your heart needs to be lifted to another land. When your heart's lifted to that land, you broker the presence of that land into this land. You are in but not of. You are not citizens of the world system. You are citizens of heaven. We are passing through. Jesus is coming back. He really is. If that's not true, then neither is Christmas. If that's not true, then neither is, is, is Easter. Jesus is returning. The sky will really part and a man, a man will come who is all God and all man and descend into the holy city and rule and reign from Jerusalem. This is real. This is really real. And you will live forever with him. Listen carefully. The moment your eyes close, the Bible says you'll be present with the Lord. You have nothing to fear. Don't you understand that that's the reason Jesus conquered death? The reason he conquered death is so you would fear nothing. Not the only reason, but it's one of the benefits of his conquering of death. I said this the other night on the live stream. You're not afraid to ride in a car. You're afraid to die. You're not afraid of, afraid of turbulence. You're afraid to die. You're not afraid of a plane. You're afraid to die. You're not afraid of heights. You're afraid to die. Well, Jesus conquered death so that you would fear nothing. Do you understand that you don't die? You sleep. Never. You don't see the scriptures pointing. Well, they do a couple times, but rarely in the New Testament. Do you hear the scriptures speak of the passing away of brothers and sisters in the Lord as death? They're referred to as sleeping. Don't you remember Jesus and Lazarus? Jesus said, oh, Lazarus sleeps. The disciples said, oh, well, if he sleeps, he'll be better. And he goes, no, no, gosh, whatever. I'll help you out. He died, okay? He's dead. But I'm going to go wake him up. Remember when... When that little girl, when Jesus is walking through the villages and they're touching him, and Jairus' daughter is in her house, and he said, she's just sleeping. And they ridiculed him. 
Because Jesus doesn't look at it the way the world does. The moment our eyes close, we are in the presence of the Lord. What can the world take from you? Paul said to live is Christ, to die is gain. Paul said, I want to go to heaven, but I think it's best for you that I stay around for a little bit. Why am I talking about this? Because fear is running rampant. What's the worst that could happen? That you go be with Jesus? <laughs> Would it be that bad? Do you know if you got locked up in a jail cell for preaching Jesus, you could still close your eyes and he'd be right there? Right there. You close your eyes, just give it a little time, and you'd become aware of his presence. And that jail cell would turn into heaven. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Jesus, I thank you. Why don't you stand? Come on, stand. I'm going to pray a prayer. It's going to sound like it has nothing to do with Pentecost, but it requires Pentecost to have it. Holy Spirit, lift our hearts to the throne of Jesus. Let this be a heavenly season. A season where heaven is more real to us than the earth. And we do pray, Father, for our city and for our nation. And we ask, Lord Jesus, for your presence, for your love, for your power, for your truth to prevail. Save America. Come on, I need you to agree with me. Because a a large portion of our calling as a ministry is to America. So I need you in the pocket here. Father, save America. I want you to begin praying. Save our city. Come on, pray. You know how to pray. Father, save, save, save the broken. Protect, keep. In the name of Jesus, let the fear of man die. Let the awareness of Jesus be everything. Father, let a move of the Holy Spirit blow through our land. And we rebuke the powers that have come to disrupt and bring turbulence to the nations of the world. Lord, in Jesus' name, we plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood over America, over Orlando, over Florida, over our homes. Come on, y'all need to pray. Over our homes. Protect. Protect, Lord, our neighborhoods. Protect the victims, Lord. Protect our officials. Protect our leaders, In the name of Jesus, Lord. Protect the broken and the hurting right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Let a move of the Holy Spirit sweep the land. Let a great harvest of souls sweep the land. And we declare out loud by faith that stadiums will fill throughout the land and that homes will be filled with the presence of God. That black and white, that brown, Lord, that every, every, every skin color will worship Jesus together. That there would be great truth that you would expose lies and and let the love of God flow at the same time. I pray, Lord, for our students here. Let a second, let another Pentecost come. Let a deeper baptism come. Let a wave of the Holy Spirit come to this movement, to this ministry, Lord, to this church. Let a wave of the Holy Ghost come in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for deeper baptisms in the Spirit. I pray for 
new, new encounters with you, Holy Spirit. Begin to move in Jesus' name. Begin tonight. Let the fire of God fall again. Jesus, by faith, Lord, by faith we receive your word tonight. And we declare out loud with our voices that Jesus' image will burn with holy fire. That the Jesus school students will burn. That they will burn. Lord, that as, as Noah came off the ark and offered burnt offerings and baptized the earth in blood, I pray that as these students get off the ark, as our church family comes off the ark and the doors open again, and life begins again, that the, that the earth would be baptized in the redeeming work of the gospel, the blood of Jesus. Let the nets be cast. I'm telling you right now, the Lord's moving. Let the nets be cast in Jesus' name. Let hearts burn in this room in the name of Jesus. Let unity around and in your presence be birthed here. Let Jesus' image be a model let it be a place where hatred dies. Forgive us. Forgive our land. Forgive our ways. Forgive our, our short-sightedness. Our, forgive our demonic mindsets, the mindsets of men. Teach us to love. Raise up, raise up good Samaritans in this house. Let religion never reign here. As the Levite and the priest walk by that hurting person who'd been robbed and brutalized, but the Samaritan stopped. Bring us back to simple discipleship, simple devotion to Jesus. People who pour oil and wine on the hurting, bring them. Bring the wounded, bring the abused, bring the raped, bring those who've been robbed from, those who, who've lost trust, broken marriages. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray they'd step in to your presence and feel the arms of Jesus. Do it. Birth it in our students now. Let your fire fall on them. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Let a wave of Pentecost flow through them. Father, we want to be your harvest. We want to be your harvest. We want to be this offering unto you, our lives. You're not looking for superstars. You're looking for lovers, Lord. You're looking for the simple, for the devoted. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fall on your people. They need your strength. We need your strength. We need your wind again. We need the city to be a city set on a hill. We need the light of God to shine. We need darkness to be cast out in Jesus' name. Father, let leaders come together in this city. Let different denominations, different backgrounds, let leaders come together in this city, I pray. And give us the wisdom to see it happen. Let your presence be paramount. Let agendas die. Let your presence be paramount. And let agendas die. Let your presence be paramount. Let agendas die. Father, I pray you'd strike tonight with the, with the word of the Lord. You'd strike tonight political agendas, political spirits. That you'd strike that, Lord. It causes us to use people as a stepping stone. No, Lord Jesus, let your kingdom reign. Let this be the hour of King Jesus ruling and reigning with his might, with his glory, with his majesty. Come, 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 come. We need you. We need you to do it. We need you to fan the flame. We need you to move in power. Start here and start with these students, I pray, in the name of Jesus. 
Worthy are you, Lord, full of glory, full of honor and majesty. You are a mighty God, and you will have the nations as your inheritance. You will have Orlando. The nations will come to Orlando. They will come to Orlando. You are bigger than any virus. You are bigger than hatred. In Jesus' name, we prophesy that the nations will descend on this city. And this city will be like a pool, the pool of Bethesda. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Start with us. We repent of walking by the broken and seeming spiritual. Seeming spiritual. I pray that this student body would be more united than any student body on earth. That this church would be the most united church on the earth. That you would bring us together. Your presence would be the glue. I pray, Lord, that when people are in pain in this house, that we'd weep together, that we'd rejoice together. Lord, I pray that somehow you'd put religion on the altar tonight and just burn it up. Burn it up. Burn it all up, Lord. Make us true. Make us true. Make us real. Let the love of God live with us. Your precious presence, your loving presence dwelling with us. I pray that people would come and they'd say, I feel the love of Jesus here. Father, I pray they'd see the love of Jesus in the eyes of these students. In the countenance of these students. In the songs we sing. By faith tonight, I declare that kingdoms will be subdued. There is another king. There is another king. There is another king. I want you to give the Lord permission. Listen, I... I, I this might be hard, but you'll need it, trust me, and it'll bless you. Give the Lord permission to prune your life. Just, just, just do it. It's painful, but you'll bear more fruit. Lord, we need grace for this one. Prune us. We have no model but you. No eye has seen, ear heard, mind conceived what you have in store. We want to be holy, children of light, children of your presence. Prune us, Lord. Throw away every dead branch in our lives and let them burn tonight. Praise you. Someone hurt their left hand or you have a pain in your left hand? Father, in the name of Jesus. Cheryl, you can just put your hand on his, on his hand there. Yeah, Cheryl, right there, yeah. In the name of Jesus, thank you for healing, your healing power. Your healing power. Father, come on, lift your hands again. I'm sorry, but this, is, this matters. Father, in Jesus' name. Make us true, true Christians. Meek, humble, lowly, poor in spirit. Form us into your image. Live in and through us. Destroy. 
destroy division here. Destroy it. Destroy it. Make it illegal. Make gossip illegal. glorious light flood our hearts make greed illegal make hard hearts illegal make stiff necks illegal make pride illegal let foot let foot foot washing be the the norm here. Let generosity be the norm here. Let turning the other cheek be the norm here. Let blessing those who persecute us be the norm here. Let speaking kindly of those who speak against us be the norm here. Make us like Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, beyond some fire, you long to do this more. Light a fire in our hearts and mold us and shape us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah, he's doing a work in a lot of you. Let's just let him. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I want you to offer the Lord right now what you know has grieved him in our lives, in your individual life. Just give it to him. He's revealing it because he loves you. So just, just offer it. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Let selfishness be illegal here. Self-promotion. Kill it. You, you've got to captivate our vision, Jesus. Or we'd be left to ourselves. Come on, Lord, do it. Do it. Do it, Father. Do it, Father. We need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 He's releasing his pleasure. Come on, just receive it. Receive his love. Receive it. It's just a healing. A healing of his presence. Let tears turn to joy. Let this offering be met with a kiss from heaven, this offering of our weakness. Lord, we tell you we've fallen short. Forgive us. Now I want you to receive his presence right now. Because I don't you can't be left there. Now you have to receive times of refreshing. So Father, in Jesus' name, let your presence fall like rain like rain bringing strength in Jesus name praise you praise you praise you Calibrate all of our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Mm. Wonderful.
grateful, Lord. Just receive his presence as his child. Just receive him. Let him strengthen your heart. Let him strengthen your heart. Father, we thank you for being able to get together tonight. And there's strength in our gathering. And I pray, Lord, that you'd always be in our midst. And as David said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Let it never be said of Jesus' image of how it used to be. Burn among us. Do whatever you have to do in us to teach us your ways. In Jesus' name. Tell you the social distancing makes these moments a little more challenging. But the Lord is good. He's good. Well, we'll see you soon. You guys can stay here in the presence for a while if you'd like. It's up to you. Can you do that? What is it? Oh, those of you watching on live stream, we'll be back at the old building at Judah on June 14. So we love you all. Thank you. It'll be open to everyone, not just students. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, it seems like people are still worshiping, so 